Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It's May 28th and it's a special day here today, but it's also kind of a sad day. It is. Paul Venema is in the studio right over there. He's got family in the studio. We're going to spend a good portion of the show today uh, talking to Paul, catching up with him after the pandemic and talking about what's ahead now that today is his last day at KSAT 12. Yeah, but it's good to see Paul in person. Emotionally, I don't know if we're prepared for this, Paul. <laughs> right? How we're dare you? How dare you? <laughs> That's we're gonna true. we're gonna chat with him coming up. It's gonna be it's gonna be great live right here on KSAT. But first mm -hmm. up, uh, KSAT posted on social media. We're talking Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. Yes. Uh huh. What did you splurge on during the pandemic? And we know you you spent you spent a lot of money on well, stuff. Some people bought houses. Yeah. Uh, some people spent a whole lot of money, and some people spent a little bit of money. So on our website right now, we have the top 30 answers. Uh, someone said inflatable swimming pool. I can relate to that one because I did. And as you can see on your screen, some people said groceries. Eating out is our bad habit and that they started cooking at home. Uh, somebody said I bought it on a above ground pool because uh, they were on sale. Now they're back in, uh, and they were in stock. Now the kids are playing with it every day and then it's been warm. Uh, Tim Stewart, that's one of our photographers right there. He posted, he said, we've got a puzzle obsession now. Yeah, so he's now continuing, even though that, you know, he doesn't have to stay at home anymore. He says that he's continuing to complete puzzles and that it's cheaper than therapy. There was a bunch of them. Right now on KSAT.com, we have this whole article with a bunch of the responses. Uh, this one is a good one. Somebody wrote, they spent money on a generator. I want to be prepared just in case we lose power again. Yes, uh, that was quite the interesting week we had in February. Uh, so Someone posted, I bought my Peloton one month before the shutdown. Mm -hmm. And then someone said that she just saved money to help her her daughter get th a car paid and her tuition. All right, yeah. so you can continue to contribute and post what you splurged on if you did during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And you can find, again, KSAT on all the social, social media pages. And Mark Austin, did you splurge on fishing supplies or did someone just send them to your house? I don't know what happened. Maybe I took my sleeping pill and then accidentally ordered some fishing stuff, <laughs> but UPS keeps bringing stuff, FedEx keeps bringing stuff, and it's all stuff I'm going to use, so we'll keep it. Yeah, that's okay. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. Overnight, the Santa Clara Sheriff's Department releasing new surveillance video of the gunman behind the San Jose rail yard shooting. It shows him moments after his first round of shooting on his way to another building to kill more victims. In Washington State, three police officers have been charged in the death of a black man named Manuel Ellis. This comes more than a year after he died in handcuffs. GOP lawmakers are expected to block the vote on a commission that would investigate the January 6th Capitol attack. The vote was pushed to today thanks to an overnight filibuster on a previous bill. For the commission bill to move forward, at least 60 senators will have to vote yes, which is not expected. Today, President Biden will lay out plans for his first $6 trillion budget plan on federal debt. It will include details on Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare. Republicans have criticized it, saying it only adds to America's debt. First time unemployment claims falling again, hitting their lowest level since the start of the pandemic. 406,000 people filed for help last week. Texas Governor Greg Abbott sending a thousand state troopers to the border to combat what he calls a drug crisis. He says since the beginning of the year, the Texas-Mexico border has seen an increase of more than double the amount of fentanyl seizures it saw last year. A new CDC forecast predicts COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, and deaths will fall over the next four weeks. The CDC reporting that's because more and more people are getting vaccinated. With states across the country loosening COVID restrictions, more than half the country vaccinated, AAA is predicting 37 million people will hit the roads or take to the skies this Memorial Day weekend. On the court, the Milwaukee Bucks, Los Angeles Lakers, and Denver Nuggets take the lead in their playoff series. Today, the New York Knicks and Atlanta Hawks hoping to break the tie, and the Nets and Celtics and Clippers and Mavericks play in Game 3. And that's today's 9 at 9. Other stuff you bought during the pandemic, mm -hmm. a 1980 Coupe de Ville. I needed something interesting to drive and work on. Interesting. A hedgehog. <laughs> what? Um, another one, a $600 Dyson vacuum. Don't regret it. Use it every day. Love how it clean it makes things. <laughs> I can see that you're spending more time at home, so you're making more of a mess at home. A uh, Nintendo Switch. 
uh, inflatable swimming pool that was very popular. Yes. There was another one here. Oh, new car, new bike, new furniture, expensive wine bottles. I was out of control with the uh, yeah. home alone uh, emoji. I, I know a lot of people who, you know, were racking up their, their mm -hmm. bills while at home. But what's amazing, and our social media team was telling us this, is surprising the number of people that actually bought homes during the pandemic, which yes. fits with all the other stories we've had about how red hot the housing market is right now. Maybe it's because they were sitting at home thinking, we need it's a time new for an home. Upgrade. <laughs> yes, yes, I could, I could definitely see that. Right now it's 9.03. Let's go outside with live cam. And we're looking at cloudy skies. By the way, I was a Nintendo Switch guy, but I'm really good at Mario Kart now. You are. Thank you for contributing to the economy. Are you competing with your daughter? <laughs> Absolutely. She be <laughs> she's beating me, though. That's the problem. I may be the good, crew is laughing at your competitive edge over your daughter. I know. She actually is better than I am. That's the sad part. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, let's take a look at the state right now. As we look across the state of Texas, if you're doing some traveling today, there are showers and storms up across the Texas Panhandle, and uh, we've got some activity across East Texas. What we're going to watch tonight are showers and storms that may make their way down into San Antonio, and that's going to be overnight. There could be some heavy rain, a couple strong storms mixed in there. So that's what we're going to be watching. In the meantime, it's just cloudy and humid, and we'll see temperatures get up into the 80s today. Very similar to yesterday. 77 at the airport, 76 Bolverde, 73 Tarpley, 71 Lost Maples. And here's your forecast for the Memorial Day weekend. 40% chance of storms tonight, 30% chance during the day tomorrow, 85 degrees, 84 Sunday, and then another slight chance of a storm or two on Monday. We're going to break down that forecast for you. Take a look at that chance of storms tonight coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. And top stories we are following today. A scary night for a woman on the west side. San Antonio police say a woman in her 30s was walking in the 1200 block of Calabria just after midnight, not too far away from Woodlawn Lake. According to police, a man approached her asking for sex. A woman tried running away, but the man caught up with her and stabbed her several times in the stomach. She was taken to University Hospital, but suspect still has not yet been caught. And police have little information to go on tracking down the person who shot a man overnight. Around midnight, officers were called to a shooting and found a man shot in the arm, but a woman was already driving him to a clinic. They showed up at Complete Care out of Judson and Nacogdoches about 20 minutes later. The man told police he was in the woods when he dropped the gun and it went off. Police are still looking into his story. Well, police are hoping you can help them find five people involved in a storage space burglary. Surveillance cameras caught these images back on March 12th. Police say it was about 1030 when the group broke into the extra space storage on 281 and Brook Hollow Boulevard. Crime Stoppers say they got away with two large safes that had more than 15 weapons, jewelry and sentimental items inside. Police say all of that was valued at more than $300,000. Police say the suspects are three women and two men. They also say they had to rent a U-Haul in order to get away with those saves. If you recognize any of these people, you can crime, call Crime Stoppers with a tip, 210-224-STOP. Jury selection will pick back up at the Bear County Courthouse in preparation for in-person trials next week. A moratorium on jury service was ordered 13 months ago due to concerns over the spread of COVID-19. Starting next Tuesday, court will resume in person. So beginning today, 500 potential jurors will begin their selection process virtually. Uh, then Judge Ron Ron Hell says they will be given instructions to come to the courtroom for in-person trials. Judge Ron Hell says all COVID-19 protocols, which include social distancing and face coverings, will remain in place. In your morning headlines this morning, as the investigation continues into the San Jose mass shooting that took the lives of three innocent people. Overnight, the Santa Clara Sheriff's Department released new surveillance video of the gunman, 57-year-old Samuel Cassidy, walking across the rail yard moments after his first round of shooting on his way to another building to kill more people. Officials say Cassidy fired 39 shots armed with three semi-automatic handguns and 32 magazines of ammunition. And now investigators are characterizing Cassidy as a highly disgruntled Transportation Authority employee who may have been targeting his victims. There was a person there that was a non-VTA employee and the gunman said, I'm not going to shoot you and then began shooting other people. 
Sources also confirm U.S. Customs officers detained Cassidy in 2016 after a trip to the Philippines saying he had books about terrorism and manifestos as well as a black memo book filled with lots of notes about how he hates the VTA where he worked. And a correction, we have about nine dead in that mass shooting in San Jose. Well, a community in Orange County coming together to track down the road rage killer who shot a six-year-old. The shooting happened last week on the freeway. Aiden Leosa's mother was driving him to school when someone fired a shot through the back of the car. Investigators have released photos of the car involved and are putting together more pieces about the suspects. Now, as we understand it, there were two of you, a woman driving the car and a male in the front seat. As we understand it, the male pulled the trigger. We will catch you. We might not do it today. We might not do it tomorrow. It may not even be next week. And we never stop and never rest until we put the person into custody and get justice. Investigators say they hope signs on the highway saying who shot Aiden will prompt the killer to come forward or encourage people to report any helpful tips. Help from the family's GoFundMe and restaurant donations have upped the reward for information leading an arrest to $300,000. An international effort underway to try and prevent an environmental disaster off the coast of Sri Lanka. We told you about this earlier this week. A container ship carrying chemicals is burning for almost a week now, and there are fears that 320 metric tons of oil on board could spill into the ocean. Protective booms have been set up along the lagoon where the ship is located in an effort to contain a possible spill. Nearly 1,000 Army officials have also been deployed for beach cleanup operations along roughly 40 kilometers of the country's western coast. Well, the return to watching sports in person is supposed to be a happy time, right? Including the NBA playoffs, but clearly some fans have forgotten sports etiquette. So three NBA teams have banned fans indefinitely after a few unruly events. The latest events that happened at the Knicks-Hawks game yesterday. Hawks guard Trey Young was inbounding a ball when someone spit on him. Then at the Jazz Grizzlies game Wednesday, three fans were thrown out for yelling racial and sexual slurs at Grizzlies guard Jay Morant's wife, Jay Morant's wife and father. On Wednesday, Wizards guard Russell Westbrook also reacted to having popcorn thrown on him during the game. To me, it happens to me a lot of times, and you know, obviously, I've learned to put kind of the other way. But to a certain extent, you can't just keep it the other way. There has to be some penalties or something to put in place where fans can't just come to the game to do and say as they please. It's uh, John ja Morant. My apologies to you, sir. The National Basketball Players Association also releasing state saying no true fan seeks to harm players or violate their personal space. The fans in all these instances have been banned from going to NBA games for life. And time now is about 910 and about 77 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA at 9 after the break, the much-anticipated debrief with legend San Antonio reporter Paul Venema here to talk about some of his most memorable stories and what his plans are after 47 years in broadcast news. We're looking forward to that, Paul. And a quick check of your stocks. The Dow is up 106 points. We'll be right back. We're talking Paul Venema's retirement. Come up, we had a whole crowd here in the studio right now, including... Jesse DeGollado right Hi, over Jessie. there. Jesse, it's so good to see you here as well. Uh, we're going to talk about that coming up. Yeah, but for now, let's go ahead and talk about what we can expect for the weather today. It's going to be a little warm, but maybe not as warm as we usually expect this You're time You're not of used year. to an audience like this, That's Justin. <laughs> That's okay. It's, it's a good audience. Yeah. Right? I'm, glad, I'm glad to see everybody They're, here. Watch out. They're throwing popcorn today. <laughs> well... Hopefully we'll give them a good forecast because, okay. uh, you know, today looks pretty good. It's tonight that we're going to worry about because we could see some showers and storms right. and maybe some heavy rain in spots. So let's take a look across the state of Texas right now. Now a lot of people are doing some traveling today and uh, there could be some places where you run into some rain uh, with some thunderstorms in a few spots, especially up across the Texas Panhandle and then far east of Texas. That's where we're seeing some rain right now. There's an outflow boundary right about there. We'll keep an eye on that today, too, as that could spark off a few storms a little bit later this afternoon. Here is the risk for severe weather across the state. This area is shaded in yellow. That's your slight risk. So that's where the best chance of severe weather will be today. If you're heading out west, keep that in mind. We've got a marginal risk uh, for San Antonio, but the hill country is underneath that slight risk, and that is for tonight, likely after sunset, when we'll see some of those storms starting to work in. But the travel forecast, scattered storms for Dallas, Houston, 
you're headed towards the coast, it looks okay. South Padre Port A still looks good this afternoon. El Paso, good, although you'll have to travel maybe through some of that rough weather as you head down I-10. Here's what our forecast looks like. Um, I'd say partly to mostly cloudy today, and then by 5 o'clock, we'll start to see some storms. Now, that's with that outflow boundary, maybe up around College Station, LaGrange, or towards Houston, even Fredericksburg. Then as we get into tonight, we may have storms coming out of the west, storms coming out of the north. These may all come together, cluster of storms overnight. Now, the, the big question here is, and this is where we struggle with these sort of systems, is where these storms initially set up, where some of those outflow boundaries are, and that really will have a, a big bearing on where uh, the heavy rain falls tonight and to where we see some of that severe weather. But this is around 10 o'clock. does show some rain here in San Antonio potentially. And by midnight, this is starting to move south. And then we'll clear out some tomorrow morning before we see a few more isolated showers and storms tomorrow afternoon. As far as rainfall goes, we're thinking that west of San Antonio, that's where may, maybe we'll see some of our higher totals, one to two inches, about half an inch to an inch elsewhere. But this is going to be spotty. Again, where that cluster moves, uh, that's where the heaviest rain will be. Right now, we've got uh, 76 outside, a little bit of drizzle coming down, and we've had reports of that around town. Easterly winds at about nine miles per hour. 76 Bulverde, 72 Bernie Sage, 79 in Castroville. Some 80s already on the map down around Catula, 82 there. Lots of humidity, dew points in the 70s. And the forecast for today, we'll keep things quiet till about 5 o'clock. We'll put in a 20% chance of rain, and then rain chances go up from there. And for Memorial Day weekend, 40% chance of storms tonight, 30% chance tomorrow afternoon. Mostly cloudy, 84 on Sunday, and then another slight chance on Monday, but just a 20% shot. Our rain ch chances actually go up. As we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Wednesday may be our best day, 40% chance of rain. But we'll keep an eye on the radar tonight. Have the KSAT weather app with you, too. We'll get you updated if there is any weather, guys. And finally, back to that long road we mentioned at the beginning of this report. It is mine. After 47 years, I've chosen to retire. So this will be the last time I'll say, Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. Now, oh, just as we expected with a load of class, that was Paul Venema signing off last night. It is a very special day today here at KSAT 12. Veteran reporter Paul Venema is retiring today. Yay, congratulations. <laughs> So after working from home the last year plus, Paul came in to say hello, and we are so glad to see you in person. I am humbled. This is this is just incredible. It, it's been, the whole thing has been one one heck of a ride, and and it's uh, it's scary to kind of put the brakes on, but we got to do that. Well, know, we're so glad you're point. here with to chat with us today, and and the rest of the show is all about you. We're yeah. we're not doing anything else. Throwing away the scripts. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, uh, I, we know you've obviously covered a, a, a lot. What story or stories stand out most in your memory? You know, that, that's a challenging question. 47 years, you've covered a few stories. You yeah. know? I mean, we've, we've from, from spot news, hurricanes, and so forth. But I think the ones that have been most meaningful are the ones that I've started at the very beginning of the story as it developed and carried all the way through to where I usually end up is at, in court covering a trial. And, and two of those really stand out to me is the, uh, the Branch Davidian standoff in Waco was one of those stories where we were there. We spent 51 days in, in Waco covering that thing round the clock. And then to have that thing finally come to an end. And then, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's where I came to an end up there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that hair. Um, but seriously, uh, what, what struck me most about that was watching this thing develop and being what we do in, news de in the news business, we're very competitive. And so we were every, everybody's working hard at that thing. When the, when the, they, the, uh, the uh, compound was finally burning, mm -hmm. we, I was, happened to be there live doing a live shot for the news show. And I was all excited. We were, we were really out there on TV live covering this thing. And I was excited for, for what we do. That's what you get excited about. And then it re occurred to me that there are little children in this place who are, are burning to death. And it, it put everything in perspective for mm -hmm. me in terms of what we do for a living and made me realize what we do is, is, is so important, but we can't lose sight of the fact that we're dealing with people. And, and that's, that's been, the, the, uh, I think, the key to this whole 
this whole business for me is, is people. And that brought that whole people part of this into perspective. Amen to that, Paul. Yes. We can yeah. really actually, we see that in your work. Uh, thank and you. And that's why we all love you and everybody at the courthouse loves you. Yeah. So that's, you know, that, that stands out. Well, yeah, and getting back to the, the, uh, the uh, Branch Davidian, uh, as mentioned starting from the beginning, we covered that. But then a year later, there was some of the Branch Davidians on trial here in federal court. So I got to go full circle with the story from the scene to the actual uh, wrap up of the story in federal court. So those are, uh, that's an interesting uh, uh, way to look at important stories. And another one quickly was the, uh, how much time do we have? Can we, uh, <laughs> we were going to ask uh, you about the. We have to be but done by 10. Okay. Yeah, but we're going to ask you about the most bizarre story, but we can either come, we can come back to that and you can talk about the one you have on your mind right yeah, now. I, yeah, I, I was getting, uh, following up on the Davidian was the Janine Jones, uh, another sad story. And I covered that from the beginning. From the, the, known as the killer nurse. The killer yes. nurse. When, yeah. when it, that first started developing uh, in the uh, 80s and then covered that and I, I covered the, uh, the story itself, I covered her, her trial where she was sentenced to life in prison and I covered her when she got out of prison 30 years later. So wow. <laughs> you've been around a while when you've done something like that. But that's another one of those stories that I was able to follow and start at the beginning and follow it through all the way to get me into where I love to be and that's in the court. Full circle. <laughs> Yes, yep. full circle. Yep. Uh, those were sad stories. What about bizarre? What do you? What comes <laughs> to the top of your head for that? Well, there's there's a lot of those as well because <laughs> <laughs> I bet <laughs> uh, we, we're probably not going to talk about too of too many of those here. No, I t the, the, this again. Uh, relates to a, a difficult story that we've been dealing with. This this baby King Jay, this this child who was uh, 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 killed and, and married, and, and everybody and there was a fake kidnapping. You know the story. Anyway, there was some uh, questions about his uh, paternity in that situation. So I went to uh, prison and uh, interviewed a fellow who claimed that uh, there he is right there, who claimed that he was he was the uh, biological father, and he told me he said, look, I I feel so strongly about this. This, I've written a story in honor of Baby King Jay. A song. He, a song, I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, would you like me to sing it? I said, yeah, I've never had anybody sing to me in prison, right? And he proceeded to so, rap to you. Yeah, it was, wow. it, was, it was his version. It was, and that, that's him there. It was just one of those crazy standout kind of stories. Well, that's crazy. So what's it been like working at KSAT all these years? And have, did you work every year of your broadcast career here at KSAT? And I have, uh, with the exception of radio. I okay. started out in radio. Okay. And, but yeah, every, every, this is my television career. What, what's that been like? <laughs> Long. <laughs> <laughs> that's all folks, we'll be right back. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, no. Look, it, it, it has been so incredibly rewarding. I wouldn't tell our general manager this, but I probably would have done it for nothing. You know, I Aww. mean, it, it is, it's, it's one of those jobs that consumes you, you just, you live it and, and it becomes you it, and, and you guys being in the business, you understand this. It, it totally envelops you, it becomes you. And so it, it's, it's part of me, you know, it's who I am. Well, Paul's gonna be back after the break to tell us more about what's next now that he is retiring. So please don't go yes. anywhere just yet. Okay. And please don't go anywhere. Not allowed to leave the building. <laughs> Thank you, I'll be back. We'll be right back. Paul had a special way of just throwing in a little charm. And when I found out he was the first El Rey Feo, I thought, wow, that's appropriate. This man is prince or king. Mr. Venema, what can I say? You've always been an inspiration to me. I was working with you one time about uh, somewhere between 12 and 15 years ago. And I said, you know, you've been here for a long time. When do you think you're gonna retire? And you said, retire? Retire from what? All I do is meet people and tell stories. That's an inspiration. Hey, Paul Venema, I just want to say congratulations on your retirement. We are sure going to miss you, man. And uh, well, we're not going to miss you because we're still going to be seeing you. I think of you. I think of uh, integrity and journalism. Always wonderful, great stories, smart. Uh, integrity is the right word, I guess. So anyway, I love you and uh, congratulations. I'll see you out on the road. Life's Highway. 
Aww. Hello, Steve that, Warner. Yeah. That was really nice. He is a class act. He is yeah. a really, really nice fella. He's, it's good he's to good see him fella. on the screen, yeah. right? <laughs> I, I was totally, that surprised me. That, that was really nice. Surprise. Yeah. Well, here's Ooh. Paul. 47 <laughs> years in TV news. It's more than a career, of course. It's a legacy in our KSET family here feeling a little bittersweet today. Uh, if you just now joining us, we are celebrating Paul Venema's career on his last day at KSAT. That has to be surreal to hear, Paul. Boy, it is. It really is. It's, yeah, I don't want We found some vintage Paul Venema reporting, some pretty hardcore stuff. Take a look at this, Paul. Since we're in the business of recording events as they happen, we wanted to show you some of the things we've captured on videotape, but have kept a secret until now. Take, for example, courthouse reporter Paul Venema, a serious, dedicated, no-nonsense journalist. <laughs> Building these outside walls and the other concrete work currently underway is relatively routine work. The second checkpoint is as we enter the media compound. Now here it's more than just a credentials check. Here they examine everything you're carrying, whether it's a camera, briefcase, whatever. And they're very thorough. And so the, the main thing we wanted to show you is <laughs> the original San Antonio drive-by. Uh, on a bike? <laughs> Bicycle. You wanted to show people that they did have hair at one time, right? Oh, Paul. We all did at some point, Paul. Um, <laughs> you, you had to finish your journalism career from home due to the pandemic. I did. What was that like covering the courts from home for over a year? That, that has been a challenge. It really has. Because up until then, it's sitting in the court, taking notes, covering trials, and so forth. But there is so much that goes on behind the scenes, very important stuff that goes on in the courthouse. And I didn't really realize how much there was was to covering the courts besides trials. So it, it was it was a matter of, of just digging it just a little bit deeper, going a couple layers down in the judicial system and generating stories that were really interesting to me and, and, and a challenge to do. It was it, I was I was very surprised and, and blessed to be able to do it that way. It was nice. And a lot of people are wondering, did your friend Willie Nelson approve of your retirement plans? <laughs> As a matter of fact, when I was going to retire, I, when I announced it this winter, he sent me a little email and, and said, congratulations, and I'm not going to be far behind you. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see uh, how far behind he is. I don't think he will. <laughs> Paul, tell us about your plans for retirement. We know you and Sonia <laughs> love to go on cruises. And of course, you know, last year was kind of a game changer for, yeah. for the cruise industry. And, and that, you know, that's one of the things that we're really looking forward to. Sonia has already got a cruise booked for 1920, for 1922. <laughs> for, I'm losing it. 2022. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and bless her heart. I mean, she has, thank, you, know, you talk about thanking people. Sonia has been been my rock in this whole uh, ride in, in, uh, in this business. Uh, but as, as part of that, she, she's the, uh, she keeps me grounded, okay? <laughs> Sometimes that's important. But beyond that, she's, she's making these plans for me down the road. So, uh, uh, we're going to be cruising, but you know what I want to do right now? I'm going to take just a couple of weeks and decompress. Yes. Okay, but th this industry kind of eats you up. It chews you up sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I want to take some time to just kind of sit back and say, now what, Lord? You know, and see what, what's going on. So to, to, that was kind of a, a backward way to answer your question, but I really don't have any specific plans. I'm not, not going to go out and hit the golf course on Monday morning. And, right. But uh, I am looking forward to, I have a brand new uh, a grandson, so I'm looking forward to chasing grandsons instead of deadlines. That'll be a refreshing thing. But so it's, it's all pretty much personal. And at, at that point, well, I, uh, everything will probably shake out and the Lord will have some kind of plan for me, I know. So well, I'll, wait, uh, I'll wait on the Lord to see where I'm going. For your entire KSAT family and the San Antonio community, we love you. We wish you the very best. You have earned everything that is coming your way yes. in these days you're, you're, and years ahead. You're so kind. I'm just humbled by, by everybody's friendship and, and, and by, by what we're doing here today. It's, it's, it just takes my breath away. I, yes. I, I think there's some pollen in the air. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you've had, a, you've had a, a big week this week. A lot of yeah, people yeah, getting yeah. to see you for the first time after a, you know, after a whole year. Right. And, yeah. you know, we, just, we just love you so much, and we're so glad that you're here with us. Well, we're going to say farewell for now. Uh, we have one more soundbite here, I think, from our Katrina Weber to you. Oh, good.
I have so much enjoyed working with you for the past 12 years of my career at KSAT. You are the consummate professional, a gentleman, and a good guy who always brought a smile to my face. Oh, the day's finally come. Something we've talked about a long time, and you finally finally did it. Congratulations. I just want to let you know how much I appreciated working with you over the years and how much I cherished the fun times we had because I consider you more than a co-worker. I consider you a friend. Welcome back. It's 936. We'll take a look outside with a live cam. Nice and humid, but you know what? Not too bad for a Friday. It is Friday. I mean, that, that trumps everything, right? Uh, we, we've almost made it to the weekend. There is a little bit of drizzle out there, though. I should warn you that may cause a few slick spots in the roads. It's, it's nothing heavy, and we're seeing quite a bit of cloud cover. Temperatures at this hour in the 70s were at 76 at the airport, 75 Randolph, 78 New Braunfels, 73 in Tarpley. You see the cloud cover there. The forecast heat index today. This is what it will feel like as we get into the afternoon. 92 here in town. It will feel like it's in the triple digits down there around Katua. This is basically what we've seen the last couple days. Changes arrive tonight. We're expecting storms to move in from the north. We have a decent chance to get some showers and storms somewhere around the area, maybe with some heavy rain and a few strong storms. We're going to dive into that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you. Let's take a quick look out at Transguide. There looks like maybe some drizzle that you were talking about. There's Loop 410 at San Pedro, and things are moving there, though. Memorial Day, a day to remember and honor those military men and women who paid the ultimate price, but many people also treat it as the unofficial start of summer. And with states across the country loosening COVID restrictions, Americans are eager to travel this Memorial Day weekend. Stephen Cavazos has a look at what we can expect on the roads. Mark Stephanie, experts are saying we may see an unprecedented number of travelers since the pandemic began. Some 37 million people will either take to the roads or the skies. The hustle and bustle of holiday travel. Americans are gearing up for the unofficial start of summer with more than half adults fully vaccinated in the U.S. and the CDC easing guidance. AAA forecasts 37 million people are going to travel by plane, by car, by bus. AAA says that a 60 percent increase in travelers compared to last year. Millions are expected to hit the road. One of the biggest issues for drivers, gas prices. The national average is a little over three dollars a gallon, the highest since 2014. Rather than going as far as they had originally planned, they may alter their trip to travel uh, not quite as far. But regardless of how expensive gas prices are, that's not going to keep people from traveling and taking those road trips this summer. While most will take to the roads, many are also taking to the skies. Now for this holiday weekend, we are expecting 65 to 70,000 passengers per day through our checkpoints. Travelers will notice increased security at airports beginning this weekend. TSA is also adjusting staffing to accommodate more traffic through security checkpoints. Even though things seem to be getting back to normal, the pandemic isn't over yet. So it's important to plan ahead and stay safe. If you're going to a hotel, are all the amenities open? You know, some pools are closed. Not every dining room is open. If you're traveling to the airport, make sure parking lots are open. For your traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's just about 940. You're watching GMSA at 9. Welcome to Wolf Stadium. We're outdoors tonight because there's some baseball happening here this evening and there are some changes going on here at the stadium. Yeah, we're going to tell you guys everything you need to know as fans come back to the Wolf and we get ready for what's going to be an exciting night here at Wolf Stadium. It is time to play ball in front of a full crowd out at Wolf Stadium. David Sears and RJ Marcus will join us live this morning from Wolf Stadium to talk about this weekend's action and some big changes for fans headed out there. Hi. Hey, Marcus, morning, I just wanted you guys to know right off the bat, nothing against <laughs> you guys, but since the Spurs are no longer in the playoffs, we thought we'd take our sports segment out on the road where there mm -hmm. is some action going on, especially <laughs> tonight here at the Wolf. So, so don't be offended that we're not with you in the studio, okay? Yeah, guys, big weekend series coming up. The Flying Chanclas are going to be taking the field but two nights at Wolf Stadium. There we go. Yeah, we're the rocking the jerseys chocolates. here at Wolf, as you can see. And it's going to be part of the Texas the Texas Collegiate League. And David, we're going to be joined here a little bit by Jeremy Sneed. But let's talk a little bit first about how excited it is just to have fans back here. Full capacity. Full capacity, of course. The uh, the rules 
are relaxed a little bit. If you are vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. If you're not vaccinated, they ask that you wear a mask unless you're eating. So very simple. We can understand all that. Get vaccinated, <laughs> no mask, mm -hmm. not vaccinated, mask, unless you're eating. There we go. <laughs> and this place could be packed yeah. tonight. That's yeah. what we're looking for, for, a, for the home crowd to come out and enjoy some baseball. Jeremy, first off, Jeremy, there's a little confusion mm -hmm. between the missions and the chocolates because <laughs> sure. a couple of years ago, the missions were the chocolates for a couple of days. So explain what's going on here. Yeah, so a few years ago, Major League, uh, Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball introduced the COPA initiative. Uh, where teams could, could adopt a, a Latin alter ego. The missions came up with, with the Flying Chanclas, uh, which was a huge hit out here. Uh, so unlike most teams, uh, the missions adopted the Flying Chanclas alter ego for every Thursday home game, where the Chanclas unis, Chanclas gear, everything like that, uh, for Thursday promotions as well. And uh, when it came time last year to come up with a team for the Texas Collegiate League, might as well do flying chanclas again, and so that's what they're sticking with for. That's what we're sticking with for this year. Yeah, and what's exciting about this is that this flying chanclas team is going to have a have a lot of local representation. A lot of local guys are going to be part of this. Talk a little bit about this roster. Yeah, so the initial roster starting starting today is made up of a little about 85, 90 percent local kids. Reagan High School, Brandeis, Our Lady of the Lake University, Incarnate Word. So a lot of local talent, some returning kids from last year too. They couldn't get enough flying chanclas. Uh, so they had to come back and plenty of representation through the San Antonio area. How excited are y'all that you're going full capacity because you're opening up tonight with the chanclas, but when the missions come back in a couple of weeks, it's going to be the same full capacity, vaccinated, you're okay without a mask and, and, and those rules, but how excited is, is this yeah. organization to, to, get the, to get the crowd back? Yeah, uh, phones have been ringing off the hook since we went on since we went on sale, full capacity, and even uh, our first homestand for the missions was at half capacity. We still sold out of about half those games. Fans were definitely happy to be back. Basketball's over, so it's definitely baseball season <laughs> yeah. for sure, and uh, with the team coming back soon from their road trip, uh, we're expecting definitely plenty of uh, fans to flock into the Wolf again. Yeah, and it feels great yeah. out here. Of course, the missions will be back on June 8th, so June we'll 8th. have full All capacity right. then. Thanks, yeah. Jeremy. Appreciate it. Put me in, coach. <laughs> ready to play some ball, baby. Let's <laughs> First go. pitch, 7 look good. Yeah, Let's go. you're ready to go. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Steph is headed that way with a giant sandal. <laughs> All right. They didn't. They'll be flying. <laughs> they didn't hear you. Well, that's speaking. Probably best. Yeah, that's probably best. <laughs> speaking of, well, not chanclas, but, but shoes. shoes. Right. Yeah. They showed off their shoes and they made it in the top five. And remember those art students from Edison High School we told you about yesterday? Well, they brought home $15,000. San Antonio team inspired sneakers got second place in the Vans Custom Culture Contest. Very cool. Lead artist Rogelio Zamaripa says having students represent San Antonio through art was a wonderful opportunity. You know, um, so I think it's very important um, that art could be highlighted. And I'm glad that we highlighted it within our district, within our city, and to show that it's something important that students need, I believe. And it's, it's a type of counseling, a type of therapy, and it's, I enjoy it. I love it. This check is a investment for the futures to come. The $15,000 will help support the art program with making repairs, buying new art supplies, cameras, and iPads. Congratulations to those students out at Edison High Edison School. Edison High School. Way to go, guys. Hey. I had a feeling they were going to do very, very well in this contest. Yes, they're very impressive. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. Representing the 210. Justin mm -hmm. Horn's here now with a look at the Memorial Day weekend forecast. Has anything changed in the last day or so regarding the outlook for, for the weekend? Not really. And I okay. think most of the weekend is going to be pretty good. There's going to be some periods where we may have a storm or two, but all in all, it's not. I don't think it's a washout. What we're going to have to watch, though, is tonight. I think that's sort of the main time frame that we've got to keep a close eye on. So here's what to expect. Today, we'll start off cloudy. We've got the drizzle out there right now, and then we should go partly cloudy this afternoon. Uh, tonight, there is a chance of storms. There's still a question as to where exactly these storms will move, how much rain they'll put down, but we have a general idea. This weekend, mostly cloudy and isolated storm. That's mostly Saturday and Monday that we're talking about. Sunday looks relatively dry. And as we look outside right now, see visibility is down 75 degrees. There is reports of drizzle at the airport. We've seen some often on drizzle in spots around town. So heads up there, there will be some wet roads and spots. You see all the cloud cover. It's pretty thick right now. We're not looking for any breaks over the next several hours. It will take until the afternoon that we see uh, at least a little bit of sun. 79 Castroville, 77 Port SA, 81 in Pleasanton, 76 in Seguin. It's another warm, muggy morning. And uh, 74 Kerrville 
83 out in Del Rio. Here is the setup. We've got showers and storms up across North Texas. It's sort of a messy pattern. We have another area of showers and storms stretching from uh, the Waco area over towards uh, Nacogdoches, and that is pushing south. There's an outflow boundary there, so we need to keep an eye on that. And that's sort of the nature of this pattern. It, these outflow boundaries are going every which way. We saw this a little bit last week, and that really dictates where we see new storms pop up. But uh, what we think will happen tonight is that we'll get some storms gathering maybe up across the San Angelo area, and some of those could work their way towards uh, the Hill Country in San Antonio. There is a slight risk of severe weather today. It's so on a scale of 1 to 5, about a 2. Uh, stretching from Midland, Odessa, Lubbock, San Angelo, down towards San Antonio. We're just on the edge of it here. San Antonio is actually in the marginal risk, but Hill Country is within that slight risk. And here's what our computer model is showing. Uh, it does show some showers and storms developing to the north this afternoon, places like Austin, College Station, LaGrange. And then by tonight, we see the showers and storms shifting in from the north and maybe northwest. This is where we could see some heavy rain, but don't pay too close attention to the exact location. Again, as I mentioned, there's still some questions as to exactly where this cluster of storms will move. And then as we get into uh, tomorrow morning, everything should clear out and we'll get a chance to see things quiet down a little bit before a few more isolated showers and storms pick up by the afternoon. As far as rainfall goes, looking like one to two inches, mainly west of San Antonio in general, and then a half an inch to an inch, maybe San Antonio points east. Uh, under some of these heavier storms, though, you could see some higher totals. Forecast calls for a high right around 89, 20% chance of rain around 5 o'clock, but we start to bring those rain chances up overnight, 40% chance of storms, and then a 30% chance during the day on Saturday, 85, 84 mostly cloudy Sunday, and then a 20% chance of rain on Monday. Extended forecast, uh, we'll look for 30% chance of storms Tuesday, 40% chance Wednesday, and that's probably our best chance of rain as we look down the line middle part of next week, and that's when we could see some more areas of heavy rain. May has been a busy month, and it doesn't look too let up, guys. No. Thank, you, thank you, Justin. Yep. Yeah, but it looks pretty good for the most part. Time now, 9.51. We'll be right back. Good morning. Hey, guys. Coming up on live, Elizabeth Bangs from Press Your Luck. Plus, the American Idol Encore winner performs for you right here on live. See you soon. At least 21 cyclists have been hit and killed while riding on San Antonio streets since 2014. I'm Sarah Acosta coming up tomorrow on GMSA, how one local group is aiming to make it a safer place for cyclists to ride. And welcome back. It's about 9.55 and today we are saying goodbye to Paul. It's his last day here at KSET. We're going to take a live look right now. We're going to pull back the curtain inside in Aww. one big happy vaccinated group inside the KSAT 12 newsroom. There's Paul's desk and there's the whole big gang standing by to uh, say farewell. He's talking to Sarah Spivey over there, but we've got producers and just about everybody. Mike goes there. He's there in the background. There's Mr. Venema. He joined us a little bit earlier in the newscast. So just to give you guys an idea, we haven't seen Paul in over a year because, you know, like everybody else, we were affected by COVID. So everybody's been working from home. Uh, this is a the first time that Paul is like back in the newsroom and and talking to people and people are so excited to see him and that that is his son right there that that's Jake and then that's Jake that's his granddaughter right there next to her. Yeah Jake is uh, in the United States Marine Corps but anyway uh, Paul it's been wonderful uh, we've got tributes all over the place on social media on our website ksat.com one viewer wrote a while ago thank you Paul for your years of service to our community we moved here in 02 and since then we've admired your patience great attitude and more than anything your truthfulness in reporting just the facts. May you enjoy your retirement abundantly. We were truly lucky to work with you, Paul. 